Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. It is finally Adventures in the Forgotten Realms release weekend, and even though Wizards is behind when it comes to getting the product out in large quantities to stores, the set is still having an impact on the secondary market, especially when it comes to cards for new commander decks. Since the set just came out, we won't be talking about those cards in particular today, because we need some time for them to stabilize, establish a baseline, but you will see a lot of influence from the set in general. Aside from that, Modern Horizons 2 continues to be a key driver on cards in the secondary market. You're going to see a lot of that in the video today. Ultimately, though, the market has picked up slightly from last week. As a matter of fact, in this video, I did have to go back to the $2 threshold that we have been doing for a while. So we're not going to talk about any cards unless they're moving at least $2 up or down. And like we have been doing, any card that's being egregiously market manipulated, we're not going to discuss here in the video. Quickly before we get into it though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use that Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pick up Modern Horizons 2 products there, or a number of other things that they have on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or it consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. And whenever you use that promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated, so thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We'll begin with the Standard Legal Spotlight, where we discuss the Standard Legal cards that are moving the most this week. We'll begin with a couple cards going down in value, and this week, yet again, is Grim Tutor from Starter 1999. It's down 240 to 93.78, and this has been soft ever since it did get reprinted in Corset 2021, but in recent weeks, it has been trending down again. It is a tutor, so it does continue to see play in Commander in various builds, old and new. Corvold Vakers King, the copy from the list, this is kind of interesting. It was on the list during Kel time, then it went away. However, it is back on the list again with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. So this is an example that some of those cards that came off the list, they could come back. This one goes down 602 this week to 1610. This does get play in Pioneer John Sacrifice. This is also a very popular commander, plus part of the 99 of a lot of builds there too. Shadow Spear, this is the loan card going up in this section this week. It's up 207 to 1537. And this has been a big standard sideboard card in a lot of different builds. Now that trend is continuing into the latest season. Plus, it sees play in other formats as well. Pioneer, this is in Azorius and Soul. Modern, you might find this in Hammer Time, Urza's Kitchen, Affinity, Hell's Kitchen, Hardened Scales, and more. And of course, Modern has been a key driver for cards going up in value recently. On top of that, this does see a little legacy play, but it's also a very big commander card. Some players are picking this up to upgrade one of the new commander decks from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, that is the Aura of Courage deck. Others are getting this for a fresh build around a card from that deck, Galia, Kindler of Hope. And now I'm starting to see this card in builds around another card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, Trellisara Moondancer. And that quickly brings us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. Let's see what's happening with Pioneer Legal cards with the ones going down first. We have Sliver Hive Lord from Mystery Booster. It goes down $229 to $25. Now, this got hot not too long ago when Sliver Legion was reprinted in Time Spiral Remastered, but now it's cooling off. This is sometimes a commander for a Sliver build, but usually it's found in the 99. Notion Thief from Masters 25. We saw all these cards spike last week. This copy is retracting the most this week. It goes down 304 to $5. So this is in Pioneer Niv to Light sure, it even sees a little legacy play. But the reason it spiked last week was because Hall Breacher was banned in Commander. Some players needed to get a quick replacement for that card in some of their decks. This isn't going to work in every deck, obviously, considering it is a black and blue card. Hall Breacher is just a blue card. But in some cases, it did work. I do think part of the reason it was going up, though, too, is speculation that players were going to need to pick up this card, so perhaps some speculators grab some copies. It is worth noting, though, that this is a big commander card in general, seeing more play now around another new card. This time that card is Xanathar Guild Kingpin. All right, let's look at some cards going up in value, starting with Steam Vents from Guild Pact. It goes up 234 to 2765. So we've talked about this a lot over the last couple of weeks because Modern Horizons 2 really shook up that modern format. It did lead to a lot of players needing to build new decks, or upgrade old decks. 
Two types of cards in particular tend to get hot when this happens. Lands, because players need to build mana bases and they can cross over into a lot of different decks. And the other type of card is a sideboard card. Same principle applies. Those sideboard cards can cross over into multiple builds. So we're going to see some of those later, but right now let's talk about Steam Vents. The Shock Lands are being reprinted in the Culture Shock Secret Layers. However, it's not stopping some of them from rising in value, as you can see here. All Shock Lands do get extensive play in Pioneer, Modern, and Commander. And right now, Red and Blue is a very popular combination of colors in this new Modern meta. Steam Vents even sees the occasional Legacy play. Dragon Lord Jermoka from Dragons of Tarkir is up $2.45 this week to $30.21. This is now being reprinted in the list, starting with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. This is also seeing additional commander play around two cards from the new set, which is why this is still hot this week. The main one is Tiamat, of course, and to a lesser degree, you'll find this in Drizzt Do'Urden builds. Leyline of Sanctity from Magic 2011 up $2.58 to $9.10. Sure, this is legal in Pioneer, but doesn't see a ton of play there. The reason it's out right now is because of Modern. Like I alluded to earlier, a lot of people are trying to build new Modern decks, and they need those sideboard cards. This is one of them. One example of where this is good in Modern is against Yawgmoth's Sacrifice. This happens to be especially good in the Enchantress build, since it is an enchantment. Plus, this does get some Legacy and Commander play. Liliana, Untouched by Death from Corset 2019, goes up 306 this week to 869. This is in various Commander Zombie builds, and it does combo with a new card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. That card is Shambling Ghast. If you have a sack outlet that gives you a benefit, something like Goblin Bombardment, for example, you can use Liliana's minus 3 ability, then sacrifice Shambling Ghast. When it dies, you have the option to create a treasure token, which gives you the mana to play it again, and there you have your loop. Also, this is another card that could be better in the future, considering we have two Innistrad sets coming out this fall. And the last card in the section is Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. This is the copy from the list that did join with Modern Horizons 2. It goes up 592 this week to 2960. And not only was it added to the list, but it also got reprinted not too long ago in Time Spiral Remastered. However, the demand for this card has been high because Cabal Coffers also got reprinted in Modern Horizons 2. So aside from those two cards being very popular together in Commander, this sees a lot of play in a lot of places. Pioneer, this is in Rakdos Pyromancer and more. Modern, Yawgmoth Sacrifice, Hell's Kitchen, sometimes Orzhov Stoneblade and more. This also gets Legacy play, but like I was saying, it is a big Commander card, seeing more play now because of Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. You'll find this in Xanathar Guild Kingpin builds. It also can show up in Kalein Reclusive Painter. As a matter of fact, it was in one of those decks on Game Nights this week, which could have brought a little attention to this card. Also, I've seen people putting this in Prosper Tomebound builds, and that card comes from the Planar Portal deck, and a lot of players are just getting this as an upgrade to that deck too. And that takes us to the Modern Legal Spotlight. Let's look at some cards going down in value first. Nissa Ravain from the list. It goes down 425 to 1287. This was only there during Zendikar Rising. This trends down after some recent increases, and it does see play in various Commander Elf builds. Polluted Delta from Onslaught, the original. It's down 550 this week to 112.49. Now there is another copy of this going up in value. You will see it later in the video. But these Onslaught copies of Ally Fetchlands all spiked around the time Time Spiral Remastered came out due to a renewed interest in those classic card frames. But now for the most part, they are starting to dip. We did see a little bit of softness right around the time Modern Horizons 2 came out, but then there was an increase in demand when people started scrambling to build modern decks and they kind of stabilized, even went up in some cases. But now we're starting to see most of them fall, even if it is just a little bit. Fetchlands typically see play in modern legacy vintage and commander, and this one is no exception. Stoneforge Mystic, the Double Masters copy, dropping now for two weeks in a row after some big spikes. It goes down 585 this week to 6599. And those big spikes, of course, were related to the new modern meta. Stoneblade decks have been doing very well there. Also, aside from Stoneblade builds, this can show up in Hammer Time, which is also doing extremely well. Death and Taxes and more. Legacy, you'll find this in Death and Taxes, Maverick, Stoneblade builds there too, and other decks. And Commander, this is a good upgrade to Aura of Courage. And again, I have seen some players using this in fresh builds around Galea, Kindler of Hope. Also, it is showing up in Drizzt Do'Urden builds as well. 
Blood Gas, the copy from the list, it goes down 755 to 1788, and much like the card we saw a moment ago, this was only there during Zendikar Rising. It spiked recently, retracting now. In Modern, you'll find this in Dredge, Legacy Hogak, Vintage Hogak, and Dredge. This is also a good upgrade for Dungeons of Death, another one of those new Commander decks. Plus, I have seen this in some fresh deck lists around Sephiroth of the Hidden Ways, that is the front-facing Commander from that deck. And beyond that, this happens to be a Vampire, so maybe this gets better this fall when Innistrad Crimson Vow comes out. Next, we have Tarmogoyf, the copy from the list. It goes down $7.59 to $35, and this had a short stay on the list, only there for Modern Horizons 2. And this copy may be still trying to find its price point, but it's quite affordable at $35, considering it's a Tarmogoyf. Now, in general, Tarmogoyfs have been going down in value, as you know. It doesn't see as much modern play as maybe it once did, but it still shows up in builds there. You'll find it in Jund, Four Color, and Jund Death Shadow, The Rock, and more. Also continues to get some Legacy, Vintage, and even a little Commander play. Lurgoyf, this is the copy from Deckmaster's Garfield vs. Finkel. This particular copy only comes in foil, and it did spike last week. This week it normalizes back down 1215 to 1380. This does see a little Commander play, and it is seeing a little more now and builds around another new card, Volo Guide to Monsters. Here is yet another Onslaught fetch land losing value this week. This is Wooded Foothills. It goes down 1411 to 7575. And the last card going down in value is Shattering Spree, but this is the copy from the Guilds of Ravnica is a guild kit, which did move very aggressively last week. So it's not too surprising to see this big drop. Overall, Shattering Sprees are cooling off, but this one did uncharacteristically jump last week compared to the other ones. And now it goes down 1551 to 2149. Now, why did this get hot in the first place? It falls back to the fact that this is a card that you're going to find in a lot of modern sideboards right now. A lot of decks are running Urza Saga. This is good against that card. Plus, a lot of the successful decks in this modern meta are leaning a little harder on artifacts. Decks like Hammer Time, Amulet Titan, Urza's Kitchen, Hell's Kitchen, Stoneblade Builds, Affinity, Hardened Scales, and more. Also, Shattering Spree continues to see play in Legacy, Vintage, and Commander. Alright, the first card going up in value is Chalice of the Void. This is another popular modern sideboard option. You'll find this in a lot of different builds. This one, though, still trending up. Also, it gets Legacy, Vintage, and a little Commander play. Mirrodin goes up 274 to 4941. Masters 25 up 334 to 4963. Modern Masters goes up 547 to 5236. And Time Spiral Remastered is jumping 576 to 4999. Emrakul, the Yance Torn, goes up 609 to 5850. This is the copy from the list that did leave the list after Keldheim. This is a card that's also banned in Commander, so you can't blame that format for this chump. However, as you may have guessed, this is moving mostly because of Modern. You'll find this in Glimpse Cascade, that's a pretty popular build right now. Sometimes it's also an Amulet Titan, taking turns and more. Many times you'll see this come out of a sideboard against the Mill deck, and Mill strategies are getting more play now in this Modern meta partially because of a new card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, that is Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Also, this continues to see Legacy play in Sneak and Show, Omnitel, Mono Green Cloud Post, Enchantress, and sometimes Doomsday. Wow, check this out, Blood Moon. We have five copies that are going up at least $2 this week. Modern Masters up 266 to 1914. The Dark up 279 to $100.09. Masters 25 up 366 to $20.50. Chronicles is even going up 402 to 2328, and finally 9th edition up 722 to 2324. So obviously this is in a lot of builds in this new modern meta. It's in Blitz, Girl Midrange, Enchantress, Mono Red Aggro, many times is it Tempo and Crashing Footfalls, plus much more. This also continues to see a lot of Legacy play and Commander play. Cavern of Souls, the copy from Ultimate Masters, goes up 819 this week to 9878. This did join the list with Keldheim and is still there, but this copy is going up regardless. In Modern, you'll find this in Amulet Titan, Five Color Elementals, Humans, Eldrazi Tron, Merfolk, Spirits, Elves. Also, this gets Legacy play and a little Vintage play. Plus, you know, this is a highly played Commander card. It's in a lot of different decks there, including a new one, and that is Tiamat. As a matter of fact, there was a Tiamat build on Game Nights this week that was using Cavern of Souls. And finally, for this section, we have Time Spiral's copy of Darkness. It goes up 843 to 1883. That Legends copy, creeping up just a little bit this week, didn't quite make that $2 threshold. 
However, the reason this is going up is because it is showing up in modern mill decks now. And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we see cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. Remember, in this section, you're going to see on the screen a price that is very similar to what you might find on a price tracking website. And even though, sure, a lot of market manipulation can occur in the vintage market, you do have to be careful. The cards I selected today don't feel like they're getting pushed in that direction, at least not very much. However, there's still something you have to be careful of. When you look at these price tracking websites, they tend to give you an average value of high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies of cards. Now, that's not always applicable to every card because not every card gets graded in high quantities. However, the older cards, the more iconic cards they do. So keep that in mind. Some of the prices in this section are an average between those two types of cards. Sarah Sanctum. This is in Legacy Enchantress, also in many enchantment heavy builds in Commander, including Sithis Harvest Hand. This goes up 9 dollars this week to $359.96. And as you can see from the upper right hand corner, this is our first reserve list card of the video as well. Tropical Island from Revised. It goes up $10.31 this week to $800.99. Axelrod Gunnarsson. This is the copy from Legends. It goes up twelve forty three to fifty six ninety two. Mana Crypt. This is the original book promo giveaway copy. It goes up twelve sixty six to three ninety nine ninety nine. Obviously, this gets a lot of vintage play and a lot of commander play. I'm seeing this now in a lot of deck lists around Xanathar Guild Kingpin. Flying Carpet from Arabian Nights goes up fourteen seventy this week to one twenty three fifty. Chromium from Legends up fifteen fifty three to one forty four ninety nine. Kobold Overlord, this goes up sixteen fifteen to one forty nine ninety eight. Hercules Recall, the original from Antiquities, up seventeen ninety nine to one forty seven forty nine. My JGN, the copy from Arabian Nights, up nineteen eleven to one eighteen eighty nine. Disrupting Scepter from Unlimited goes up nineteen seventy four to sixty six forty nine. Eye for an eye, the Arabian Nights copy goes up twenty five dollars to sixty four ninety nine. Earthquake from Unlimited up 2638 to 159. Mishra's Factory, this is the Antiquity Summer variant. It goes up $36 to $189.99. Volcanic Island from Revised, it's up $38.25 to $850. Acid Rain up $40.98 to $344.97. Elephant Graveyard up $43.50 to $499.99. Vivictus is Maddie. This is the copy from Legends. It goes up fifty-four sixty-five to one forty-nine ninety-four. Fork from Unlimited jumps one hundred nine sixty-one to three ten sixty. When you see these big jumps like this, typically that means you had higher grade copies for sale this week, and in most cases they are higher grade graded copies. Here's another one. Bayou from Unlimited goes up one forty-eight thirty-nine this week to one thousand one forty-eight thirty-nine. And finally, Library of Alexandria. This goes up $1,880 to $7,999.99. That takes us to the best of the rest, and usually I call this the Commander Spotlight because most of the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander. But recently, with the modern influence on card prices really going into high gear, I changed the title so I could be a little more broad in this section, show you some different things, but you will see there are some cards here that are moving mostly because of Modern. Do I see right off the bat a Shadowmore Rare that's yet to be reprinted? I think I do. This is Savor the Moment. It's going up 223 to 2554. And I'm going to Savor the Moment and use my one per video. You know this because you watch the videos. But during this time in Magic, there was a recession in the game. Less packs were cracked. Which means Rares that have yet to be reprinted tend to get a little spiky when people pay attention to them. So why are people paying attention to this? Well, it is in modern taking turns decks. That's the biggest reason. Also does see a little commander play. Ensnaring Bridge. This is the Stronghold copy. It goes up 232 to 3331. There are typically four of these in the modern Lantern of Insight Eggs decks. Also, this is another useful sideboard card in that format found in Tron builds. Sometimes grow mid-range and more there. Additionally, this does see legacy, vintage, and commander play. Even seeing more commander play now around a new card. Oswald Fiddlebender. Jace the Mind Sculptor, the copy from Masters 25 goes up 236 to 6791. You're going to find this one in modern control builds, stone blade builds, crashing footfalls, taking turns, legacy, it's in miracles builds, and more there. And this is seeing some more commander play now in Xanathar Guild Kingpin decks. And it did get a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week too. Ragavan Nimble Pilfer, this goes up 240 to 8249. And first and foremost, this is a big modern card. 
It's in Is It Tempo, Rakdos Luris, Jeskai Stoneblade, Grixis Death Shadow, Jund, and more. Legacy, you'll find this in Is It Delver, Stand Still, and more there. Plus, it is a very popular commander. And beyond all that, it's a good upgrade to Planar Portal. It's in some fresh builds around Prosper Tomebound. And I am seeing this in some commander decks around a new card from the regular set, Kalein Reclusive Painter. This was one of the cards that was in that deck on Game Nights this week, too. Glimmer Void from Meriden. This goes up 248 to 1617. In Modern, this is in Lantern of Inside Eggs. Affinity, Wars of Builds, also gets some commander play, too. Liliana of the Vale from Innistrad goes up 252 to 9444. In Modern, you'll find this one in Jund, Wars of Stoneblade, and more. Also see some Legacy and Commander play. Ink Moth Nexus from Meriden Besieged. It goes up 257 to 4211. In Modern, this is in a lot of builds. It's in Hammer Time, Hardened Scales, Affinity, in fact. Also, it's in Legacy, in fact. Plus, this is another potential upgrade to Aura of Courage. And another card I've seen in a lot of fresh builds around Galia, Kindler of Hope. Anya's Ravager happens to be another vampire. It goes up 259 to 460, but the reason it's going up this much right now is because it's in the Legacy Jund Hollow Vine decks. That deck did get a boost from Blazing Rootwalla from Modern Horizons 2. Plus, this does get commander play in Asmorano, Mardica, Diced in a Koldakar, and more. Dark Depths. This is the copy from Cold Snap. It goes up 264 to 2899. This has been on the list since Kel time, but nevertheless, this copy is still going up in value. Legacy, you'll find this in Night of the Reliquary, Lands, and more. Plus, this gets commander play too. Renin 6, the copy from the list, but it did leave the list after Kel time. It goes up 264 this week to 9820. You'll find this one in Modern Taking Turns, Scape Shift, Jund, and more. Plus, it's in Commander Lord Windgrace and more there. Treachery goes up 267 to 9848. This is a very solid commander card. This is an expensive upgrade, but could be good in Aura of Courage, or again in a fresh deck around Galia, Kindler of Hope. We're shot in Port from Mercadian Masks. It goes up 282 to 7338. You'll find this one in Legacy, Death and Taxes, Lands and more. Also gets a tad bit of commander play. Fracture and Gust from Shadowmoor. This goes up 283 to 770. This is in the recent Secret Layer Showcase Strixhaven. But regardless, this copy's still going up in value. This is another good modern sideboard card for this new meta, showing up in a number of builds. It's helpful against Urza's Saga, good against the Enchantress decks, and of course good against many of those decks running artifacts that we mentioned earlier. On top of that, this is seeing increased commander play in Trellisara Moondancer decks. Also, this could be getting a small push from another card from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, the Book of Exalted Deeds. Nylea's Colossus, good in enchantment-heavy commander builds, again like Sithis Harvest Hand, for example. It goes up 287 to 555. Retrofitter Foundry of 349 to $40. This is seeing more legacy play now since Modern Horizons 2's been out. It's in Jeskai Standstill, Azorius and Mono Blue Affinity, Ninjas and more. This is also a solid commander card in Lanus Cryptozoologist and more there. Oboro Palace in the Clouds. It goes up 377 to 69.99. Now in Modern, you'll find this in Mill, which I think is the main reason it's going up this week. Sometimes it's in Merfolk. Also sees a little legacy and some commander play. One thing to point out, though, if you're looking for the foil of this card, there is a lot of market manipulation around it currently. Just be careful if you're making a purchase and do your homework. Polluted Delta, the copy from Cons of Tarkir. I mentioned we'd see a copy of this card going up later, and here we are. It goes up 417 to 5452. Obviously, this is hot because people are still putting together new modern builds. They need the mana base. And it's probably not a coincidence that islands and swamps are what you can fetch with this, and those happen to give you the colors for the modern mill deck. Defense Grid, 8th edition, up 378 to 2437. The 9th edition copy up 498 to 2852. This gets a little modern sideboard play in Rakdos Madness, for example. You tend to see this more, though, in Legacy or Vintage. And I have seen some players adding this to the Planar Portal Commander deck, or again, putting this in new decks around Prosper Tomebound. Also, this can be found sometimes in Oswald Fiddlebender Commander Builds, too. Archive Trap, that Zendikar copy is still hot. It's going up 531 this week to 3180. Now, this is on the list that joined with Strixhaven, but that copy is more stable this week. Again, this is another card that you're going to find in that modern mill deck. Plus, it gets Vintage and Commander Play, too. Wheel of Fortune from Revised does climb again. It's up 549 this week to 405.48. 
popular commander card in Ragavan Nimble Pilfer, and more. Sword of Feast and Famine from the Modern Event deck. It's up 559 this week to 7451. This can appear in some modern Stoneblade builds. This is also another upgrade for the Commander or of Courage deck. And like I've been saying, in other cases, there's been players that have just been building fresh around Galea Kindler of Hope. This is a good option for that as well. Also, it is getting more Commander play around some other cards from the regular Adventures of the Forgotten Realms set. Xanathar Guild Kingpin, Inferno of the Star Mounts, plus it was in the Drizzt Do Erden build on Game Nights this week. Our Gothian Enchantress from Eternal Masters goes up 571 this week to 4984. You'll find this one in Legacy Enchantress and Rector Fit. Also, it is in Enchantment Heavy Commander builds like Sithis again. Virtus the Veiled up 737 this week to 1318, but this is the copy from the list, only there for Zendikar Rising, and that particular copy did dry up online this week, which is why you're seeing this inflation. In reality, people aren't truly paying this price for the card. If you are in the market, shop around. I'm sure you can find a cheaper copy. Or if you can't find a copy from the list, just go ahead and grab the Battlebond copy. I know you'll find those cheaper. This one does get a little commander play. Speaking of Battle Bond, here's Stolen Strategy. It's up 813 this week to 1293. This recently saw an increase in commander play. It's a good upgrade to Planar Portal and was mentioned as such on a Command Zone podcast episode this week. On top of that, like I've been saying, a lot of players just want to build fresh around some of the cards from these new decks. In this case, I have seen players putting this in decks around Prosper Tomebound. And that takes us to the premium spotlights. And as you know, there's so much happening in the secondary market with premium cards. We couldn't possibly cover it all here. But every week I try to give you one, two, three, maybe sometimes more cards that are moving at least somewhat naturally with the market. So these are cards that are truly going up because of additional gameplay or perhaps some kind of preview card came out or other piece of news moved them. They're not only moving because they dried up in the marketplace or they're the target of a buyout. With that being said, there is a lot of market manipulation happening in the premium market. Not as much as we were seeing recently but it can still happen out there. So be careful if you're making purchases, do your homework. In the section, like the vintage section, the prices on the screen are going to be similar to what you might find on a price tracking website. But then if the true sales are not lining up, I'll let you know what I am seeing. And we begin with Stolen Strategy, that foil copy from Battle Bond. It's up $16.98 this week to $26.27. Is that for real? Well, in reality, there have been sales closing in on the $15 mark. If this card remains hot, I could see future sales getting closer to this price point quickly. Wheel of Fortune, the Judge Foil. Maybe not moving up percentage-wise a whole lot, but I thought it was interesting to mention this one. It goes up in theory 4276 to 1947.49. Is that for real? High-grade raw copies are now breaking $1,300. And graded copies, there's not a lot of these selling as you can imagine. The last one went for about $1,500, but it was a 9, not a 9, 5, or 10. And this was a few weeks ago. I could see a higher grade graded copy selling for this price or maybe even a little higher in the future. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Thanks for sticking with me if you're still around. Also, as always, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.